This is ubiquitin. Ubiquitin is a small protein that can be attached to molecules via covalent bonds. Molecules marked by ubiquitin are soon broken apart. Many short-lived proteins contain a code that calls for the protein to be ubiquitinated, and damaged or misfolded proteins can also be tagged for degradation. This is a proteasome. A proteasome is basically a cylindrical protein molecule with caps on either end. Lining the inner surface of the cylinder are proteases, enzymes that chop up proteins into short peptides. So how are these molecules related? Well, ubiquitin tags proteins for degradation and the proteasome does the degrading. The caps on either end of the proteasome bind to the ubiquitinated proteins. They unfold the proteins and send them to the inner chamber. Proteases break them down and release the pieces for reuse to make more proteins. Ubiquitin is also released and can be recycled to mark other proteins for degradation. The ubiquitin proteasome pathway helps cells regulate protein concentrations. If the rate of degradation of a protein increases, the concentration of that protein decreases. If the rate of degradation decreases, the concentration increases. So what happens if something in this pathway goes wrong? Some studies have actually linked malfunctions of the ubiquitin proteasome pathway to the characteristic signs of Alzheimer's disease. Many of you may know of Alzheimer's as a disease that affects the brain, leading to severe dementia. However, a more in-depth view at the disease reveals physical changes in the brain that lead to this inability to remember information. The two changes caused by Alzheimer's are plaques and tangles in the neural tissue of the brain. Plaques are formed when the protein beta amyloid builds up and deposits in spaces between neurons. Tangles are caused by the twisted fibers of another protein called tau that form within neurons. Both plaques and tangles form naturally as a person ages, but they are present in much higher numbers in people with Alzheimer's. They also form in a pattern, starting in the areas of the brain that are important to memory. Plaques and tangles can actually be found in neural tissue before the onset of dementia-like symptoms in someone with Alzheimer's. Now back to the ubiquitin proteasome pathway. One study found that an enzyme that is turned on in Alzheimer's patients cuts another enzyme in half that usually helps with adding and removing ubiquitin tags on proteins. One half of the enzyme blocks the removal of ubiquitin from proteins, leaving these proteins tagged for breakdown. In addition, proteasome function is also impaired when this enzyme is cut in half. With an increase of tagged proteins and a slowing of proteasome activity, deposits of tagged proteins can aggregate. These aggregations are the characteristic plaques and tangles present in the brains of people affected by Alzheimer's. Another study found that Alzheimer's can affect neurotransmitter receptor presence on the surface of neurons. Normally, small particles called neurotransmitters are sent from one neuron to another neuron and are detected by receptors on the receiving neuron, thereby passing a signal along. This study determined that aggregation of beta amyloid proteins as plaques can impair the ubiquitin proteasome pathway and prevent it from breaking down a protein that removes neurotransmitter receptors from the surface of the neuron. As the concentration of this protein increases, more receptors are internalized and it becomes less likely for the neurons to be able to transmit signals, which could contribute to the dysfunction present in Alzheimer's patients. As you can see, the ubiquitin proteasome pathway can play an important role in diseases. Although not everything is known about why Alzheimer's occurs, these types of advances in discovering how it specifically affects processes in the brain are a step in the right direction. For more in-depth information on how the ubiquitin proteasome pathway relates to Alzheimer's, take a look at these articles about recent discoveries relating the two topics. For more information on Alzheimer's disease in general, visit the Alzheimer's Association website or the Alzheimer's disease fact sheet from the National Institute on Aging.